Julian Assange is a hero and every one of you are heroes for having the courage to stand up. And it's standing up not just for Julian Assange, but this is standing up for press freedom. It is standing up for a judicial system, which is not uh, a mockery of justice, which is what he has been uh, uh, subjected to. And uh, it is standing up to demand uh, accountability from empire. This is standing up uh, for our democracy. So I'm gonna try to just say a quick word about all that, because the bottom line is that this case matters. Julian Assange matters, not just for Julian Assange, not just for the work that he is doing and has done, not for the transformation of journalism that he has brought in an age of, shall we say, you know, journalism that has um, lost its way, to put it charitably, has been thoroughly corrupted and, and uh, corporate uh, consolidated. Uh, his work is critical, but this case has, has enormous meaning for a broader society. And in many ways, it is a poster child of what's not working and the emergency that we're facing in our democracy. So I'm gonna to try to say a few things about that and just encourage you to stay on this. Don't take the propaganda at face value, which tells us that this is not worth fighting, that it's hopeless, that uh, you know all the myths that have been perpetrated against Julian Assange, which I'm not going to repeat here, uh, and I'm not going to dignify those uh, very uh, outrageous and derogatory myths that have been perpetrated in this new era of propaganda. You know, it's now legal to uh, commit propaganda in the US. For decades, it was not. And those protections against domestic propaganda have been repealed uh, in the early 2010s. I don't know the date exactly, but there's a lot of propaganda out there. And it's really important not to take it at face value and to stand up for what we know is really right and really critical because we are all on the line here. And Julian Assange is fighting for his life. He is fighting for uh, the integrity of journalism. He's fighting for uh, democracy and he's fighting for everything that we depend on as well. I'm gonna just make a couple more comments and just give me a nudge when, um, when the time is right. So he should be getting not only the Sacco and Vansetti prizes, he should be getting a Pulitzer Prize for journalism. He should be getting the Nobel Peace Prize for challenging empire and uh, holding government accountable. Instead, he is being persecuted for publishing information which is critical to the public interest. That's not just okay, it is essential in a democracy, and it is a routine when they published the Pentagon Papers. In, in, in reality, we are facing a dire threat to press freedom when a publisher is sitting in the dungeon of a high security COVID infested prison unjustly for more than two years. And that's after being confined in violation of human rights law for seven years prior to that. The bottom line is that Julian Assange is a political prisoner under attack because he published evidence of US war crimes, and not only US, uh, corruption and illegality. He has not been convicted of a, of a crime. He should be a free man. The US empire is the one that should be in criminal court. It's not just Julian's future that's at stake, it's our collective future the future of press freedom, the judicial system, and democracy itself. And a big thank you, especially to uh, Julian's family for all that you're doing to carry the struggle on. And thank you for the occasion of this, of your tour, which kind of gives us a chance to come out of the closet and see each other and be heard because we've all kind of been fighting this in our own little private worlds, being sort of denied and silenced by uh, the larger uh, dialogue out there. Uh, a quick comment on the extradition. It was a very humane thing that Judge Baritzer of the UK court blocked his extradition to save his life, knowing the horrific conditions in the ADX Supermac prison where he would wind up but it is not a humane thing that she then handed down effectively a death sentence 
uh, condemning him to the life-threatening conditions in solitary confinement in the most horrific prison in the UK. Uh, I won't go into the details on that, but suffice it to say, uh, this process must not be allowed to continue. If President Biden has any respect for press freedom, which he's now saying he does because he was, his Department of Justice was caught spying on journalists and trying to obtain their uh, confidential uh, records, if President Biden really does care about press, press freedom, then he needs to drop the appeal of the extradition decision. And he needs to do that now. This harassment began under Barack Obama. Uh, it, the extradition was initiated by Trump, and it's now owned by Joe Biden. He can stop it, and we shouldn't stop until he does. The threat to press freedom is paramount. I'll just say that the charges against him, against Julian Assange, in the words of his legal team, are an unprecedented, dangerously overbroad attempt to criminalize basic journalistic activity. Legal scholars say this would, quote, radically rewrite the First Amendment, close quote, by criminalizing such activity that has public interest value. And this prosecution would put an end to national security journalism. National security journalism is kind of our only hope for holding imperial power accountable. So this is a critical case, and it must be stopped. That is, the persecution must be stopped. And a variety of journalist uh, organizations, including and, and human rights organizations, including Amnesty International, Reporters Without Borders, uh, a variety of journalist unions, and so on, have all sounded the alarm about this case. I also want to just recognize that this case is a journalistic farce. The legal persecution that uh, Assange has endured has made a mockery of the judicial system particularly in the UK, but the US has been complicit in this and has been a driver of it. And this isn't like my opinion. I'm quoting here from the United Nations Special Rapporteur on Torture, Nils Melser. And if you haven't checked him out yet, Google him. Uh, he is, uh, an, shall we say, an extremely experienced attorney in international law and human rights. And he tells it like it is. He studied the case. He was not sympathetic to it. He just wrote a book about it saying that he too was fooled by the propaganda and he refused to look into the case. But he uh, was sort of pushed into doing that and he was totally shocked and transformed by what he learned. And he is now dedicated to um, obtaining justice for Julian Assange. And in his words, the cases against Julian have systematically violated the rule of law have little to no basis in fact, the rape allegations and so on. They have blocked his legal defense and have effectively silenced and ensnared him for extradition to the US. Melzer identified 50, five zero, violations of legal uh, process and uh, due process and law, 50 violations in the Swedish allegations alone allegations for which charges were never filed. He's had his access to lawyers blocked. He, he's been illegally spied upon, which should have been cause for dismissing the case right then and there and throwing it out of court. So I just want to make that point that um, this is a critical case that threatens our judicial system, it threatens our legal system, it really exposes the co-optation of our media, which has really become a cheerleader for uh, imperial power and has refused to actually look into this case or speak up for it, with a few exceptions, but not very many. Um, so the case is also a poster child uh, of the way corporate media has become a lapdog to power. The larger context here, which I won't go into, is in the context of empire and resurgent McCarthyism. So this is a critical case that we need to stand up and fight if we want to have a future. Because it's not just journalists who are in the target here. It's not just publishers. It's really the very fabric of our society and our democracy. So we all have nothing but benefit
to gain from standing up and getting, getting the word out, out because, because the, facts the facts are so, so overpoweringly uh, in favor of justice for Julian and democracy for all of us. Thank you very much for being a part of this. Thank you, Jill. Thank you so much.